We are Africans and today we'll be learning about the history of slave trade. Welcome to Badagri where slave trade first started in Nigeria. Welcome to Brazilian Barracoon. Okay. My name is Abbas Tayo. Okay. Yes. Meaning of Brazilian Barracoon means slave cell. Oh. We had the normality of the slaves in 1840. This compound that we are, the compound was established in 1840. Okay. Yeah. And we have 40 rooms in this compound. Each room contains 40 slaves for a good three months. Okay. okay. The owner of this compound was called Siriki Williams Abbas. This is the spelling of the man. And the name of this compound was called Brazilian Barracoon. This is the status of the man. The real name of this man was called Ifare Meleko. That's the real name of the man. How come the man was bringing Abbas and Williams and Siriki? Let's first read that first. At the age of this six years old, this man was captured as a slave. In of the state called Ayito. Okay, Ayito. Okay. Yes. The first person captured him as a slave was called Abbas. The man was African man, was black man, living at Daume. Daume nowadays we call it Benin Republic. Okay. Do you understand? Yeah. The Abbas was slave trader, selling slaves and buy. And we have two types of slaves. We have domestic slaves and slave domestic slaves and field slaves. Domestic slaves, which is house slaves, and few slaves working in the farm. Okay? The Abbas took this man as a slave in Ogu State. Once they capture someone as a slave in the States, you can't bear your name, you bear your master's name. That's why the man was bearing Abbas. The Abbas now sold him to white men called Williams. Williams was living at Brazil, buying slave and sell also. So the man had two masters, Abbas and Williams. Okay, the first Abbas capturing him as a slave was Islamic scholar. He's one that convert him to Muslim. Okay, when the man got the freedom from Williams, the man had the title Seriki Muslimi of Barazi. Okay, that's why the man was wearing Seriki yeah. Williams yeah. Abbas. Okay, okay, this status was in Ayatul Ogun State, roundabout mm -hmm. where the man is from, where they capture him as a slave. Yeah. When you go there today, you see the status there. In Aito Robo State. The man founded the town in 1902. The man is the one that founded the town in 1902. Williams captured him as a slave also, give him a freedom, send him to school, know how to read and write. Oh. The man understand their language there, like five languages in their country. Mm -hmm. Before the man was settled down in Lagos Island at Offing, before the man was settled down here. Mm -hmm. Williams gave him a freedom in what condition? Mm -hmm. That you maintain the slave cell for me. I will not leave you free. Do you agree or not? The man agreed that it will maintain the slave cell. That's why the man was got the freedom from Williams. Okay. And he came to settle here. To came to finally. First settled down in Lagos Island before yeah. the man comes to settle down here finally. Okay. So these two entrance though have been here since 1840. Since 18 yes, since 1840. Wow. The two entrance though have been here since 1840. And in all these world, the European products. They used to exchange in West Africa. They used one umbrella to exchange for 40 human beings. One umbrella used to exchange for 40 human beings, bottle of alcoholic drink yeah. to exchange for 10 human beings. And in the story, there's a particular man that leave her wife and one of her daughter to have a bottle of alcoholic drink. We have cannot gun it out in this. Cannot gun is the big one, the small one. Okay. They used to fight each other in out in this. It's born. Okay. They use big one to exchange for 100 slaves. This small one is for 40 slaves. They use kettle 
breed and these branches to exchange for human beings that are in this body. They don't have the particular number, depending on the bargain between each other. They used to exchange it out in this. They use mirror to exchange for 40 human beings. The same rabbit bone also used to exchange for 10 slaves. They use the canoe bone in our days to exchange for 40 human beings in our days. Now look the, around the compound. We have 40 rooms in this compound. Each room contains 40 slaves for good humans. Along the point of no return, we have the well. The well used to take the by the slaves when they are taking them to point of no return. Once they taste the water, they will lose their memory for good humans. Okay? And this well also inside this compound was a slavic in 1847. So guys, here we, we want to see what the slave cell looks like, in particular cells where they keep 40 slaves for 3 months. So let's go check it out to see how wide, how actually it looked like in those days. Come along. Wow. So guys, you can see the height of the door, it's, it's really small. I mean. Let's not talk about the room, the size of the room, how small it was for 40 slaves being kept together for, th for three months without very little ventilation up there. Just take a look at the height. I mean, I, really small. So these are among of the chains they use in the olden days to change the slaves in the olden days. This way they move them to point of no return. They used to chain either two or three, five slaves together to move them to point of no return. This is the way they work in sugarcane plantation mm -hmm. when they are working in the farm. The way they used to change inside the slave cell, the stubborn slave that proves stubbornness, they used to change them inside the cell. The sorrowful chair of the slaves in Barakun. This is a woman hung as a punishment. They give her punishment. The iron was carried as punishment in the old days. Mm -hmm. This is how they used to give their punishment, work from one place to another from one country to another. When the white people, they are negotiate with man called Chief Siddiqui Fareme Williams Abbas, maybe they want to do three by the butter. Lift up. Wow, it's really heavy. Them? It's heavy. That's what they used to exchange for 40, 40 human beings beings. in the olden days. Wow. Let me now show you among the anchor they use in the olden days for the slaves. These are among the anchor they use in the olden days for the slaves to change their two legs or their two hands when they are going to point of no return for them to no move faster than their master okay. in the old in this point of no return okay. okay or inside the slave cell okay. because they maltreat them as animal in the old in this okay this is what we call Anku Shaku Anku Shaku used to change their two legs when they are going to point of no return they put padlock here to padlock here for them to move faster than their master also. This is for leg, the other one is for hand. Okay. Seven, iron relay bits. This long one. Wow. This side one, iron relay bits. Yeah. They use this iron relay bits in so many ways. The first way, in the olden days, there's no something like Wema Bank, Sky Bank, in the olden days that yeah. we use as the money in the olden days. So they might use this iron to drill hole and keep his money on the ground in the olden days yeah. because they spend calories as money in the olden days. Yeah. Okay? So you can see the tiny amount. They use it. To put it inside fire, the odd one they use it to drill their slaves' leaves. To put padlock, to padlock their mouth, to not allow them to eat anything like sugar cane because they work in sugar cane plantation.
the path through which the slaves usually walked when they come down from the boat at that river to the Atlantic Ocean. So we're heading there right now to see what it actually looks like. So they walked through this road. A boat will usually be waiting for them over there. And so when they walk through this part, chained, they get there, enter another boat and continue their journey. And though the well used to give slavery that time, that was the original spot, slave spirit at a nation well. You know, during the olden days, you know our African concussion, that's a juju. You know, is a we English call it black magic. You know, it's a powder. You know, our forefather put a a powder inside of this well. Any slave that drink the water of the, this well at that time will look submissive for the white people. That's why you see uh, Yoruba call it uh, and uh, English call it imbecile. You look like imbecile for the white people during the slave trade to paddle it to the Europe. You know, I've mentioned the country for you, like West Indies, Australia, Cuba, Jamaica, Brazil, and uh, Portuguese. And uh, after this place now, oh, you move closer. Let's show you the water of this well. You can see the color of the water. You know, it's very dirty. You know, nobody fed this water in this community. Yeah. That's very fly land. Nobody fed this water of this well. Yeah. It's remain like from this. that century. Yeah. That was 1502. Slave yeah. started in Badagi. You know, slavery they use almost 400 years before yeah. the slavery stopped in Badagi in 1886. It's the abolition of slavery. That's missionary that stopped the slavery yeah. in Badagi. Thank you so much. Please, let's go and say the point of no return. Sorry. Please, let's go. Finally, we have arrived at the point of no return. It's written here, the point of unknown destination. This is because the slaves, as at then, they really didn't know where they would finally end. They didn't know what country they would finally end. They didn't know who their buyer was or where they would be sold to. So that's why it's called unknown destination. So we're here, guys. Let's explore this place. It's a good thing I wasn't born in that era.